welcome back to the garage. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please go ahead, click on subscribe, and also click on that bell to receive all the updates and activities on my channel. All right, so today we have something new and different in the garage that we're working on. All right, so what we're looking at, this is a 2005 uh, Mini Rev 120. Uh, so my buddy Brian bought this uh, about a month ago, and um, it's actually going to be a Christmas gift uh, for his two kids in, in December. So right now it's it's uh, September and uh, he brought it over to uh, work on it and basically get it all set for Christmas Day, right? So this, like I said, this is a 2005 and the main issue with this lead right now is it doesn't run um, from the uh, fuel tank. It's not getting any fuel delivery. Uh, we did put some gas right down the carb and it fired right up. So uh, we know that the engine is good has spark, has compression, but it's a delivery with fuel uh, that's causing it uh, not to run. So uh, I've looked on online as far as what you need to do to remove the carb on this. And honestly, for the skidoos, I really can't find really much of anything. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna document the process. So in the event that you do have one of these mini revs or uh, a mini Z120, this will help you out in the event that you're uh, in this same situation. So like I said, this is a 2005, uh, unsure of the mileage. So these are powered by a, a Honda GX120. It's a little four stroke cylinder. Gas tank is right there. And um, so this one is missing the, um, there's actually a heat shield guard. So that's missing. Brian has to uh, source that. It's also missing the air cleaner on top of the carb. The, uh, the, it's missing the key switch for the ignition, so it's been temporarily disabled. But, uh, so what I'm going to show you is down here, it may be hard to see, but those are the, uh, the backing plates for the bearing on the, uh, for the drive shaft. And if you look, it may be hard to tell, but there's actually two of them stacked up. That's actually wrong. There should be the, the bearing cup on both sides of the driver. And it's actually the same issue on the other side. Uh, so at some point, the uh, the track has been removed from this snowmobile. Not sure why, but once we get it running, we're going to uh, drop the track, drop the skid, and fix that because that is definitely not right. So I'm not sure if uh, the bearings were replaced at one point, and then whoever was working on it realized what they did, and they said, yeah, screw it, we're just going to put them as it is, but that's definitely not right, and uh, go from there. Uh, it also has some issues with the steering. The uh, the tie rods are worn and everything else. This one has a bent shock in the front, metal skis, and uh, but other than that, the the rest of this, the uh, the sled is in pretty good shape. And uh, all right, so enough chit chat. Why don't we go ahead and start working on this and uh, get this carb off? All right, so after extensive research and a lot of uh, time going through manuals and everything else. I've consulted a lot of Skidoo owners, and based on what I can see, the, the only tool you're going to need to do this job is that hammer. Because we all know Skidoo owners are just a bunch of maniacs, right? All right, guys, it's a joke, right? If you're any Skidoo owners, calm down. You know, we know you've uh, evolved a little bit past the hammer. Pretty sure you guys can use screwdrivers and ratchets. But, all right, so we're not going to need this, all right? So what we need to do is we need to take the carb off. And the carb is buried right behind there. And as you can tell, it's a pretty big access issue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the seat. And uh, so that way we can come in from the backside and you know give us a little bit uh, uh, more room to work on. So the way you take the seat off is just like any other sled, there's two screws holding it down. And so just take these two screws out and they are square drives. So go ahead, just take a square drive like this, attach it to the socket, take them out, and then the seat comes right off. All right, so let's go ahead and pop that off and uh, get going. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna drop the fuel tank. The fuel tank is just held on by two 10 millimeter bolts. There's one on this side of the strap and then there's another one on the other side. So we're gonna pop that out and then we're just gonna swing the tank out of the way so we have more access. So I actually just completely uh, removed the, uh, the fuel tank. Um, I disconnected it from the, uh, the fuel line 
and swung it out of the way just to give me uh, as much visibility, right? So I've been looking at the carb and it looks like um, we have to remove this air box assembly first, right? To get the uh, the carb off and, the, and it looks like it's being held on by two 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter nuts. There's one right there. There's another one right there. And then there's another one right on top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove those three. And they were also gonna disconnect the uh, the choke cable, which is right there. So we'll go ahead and disconnect that, swing that out of the way, and then pull that uh that housing off. So we were able to uh, remove that air cleaner housing off, and you would think you'll be able to uh, slide the carb right off. But the problem is, you know, the carb slides, 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 and then what happens is the bowl bottoms out of the on the on the bulkhead. So what we have to do is we got to take those two nuts that we're holding on the, uh, the air box housing and we're going to double nut them and then we're going to back the studs out of the engine. So we'll take these studs out and then basically the car will just drop off and we'll all swing it out. All right, so in case you didn't understand what I was talking about as far as double nutting the studs, we've taken the two nuts and we put them on the stud back to back or flange, flange to flange. We've tightened them down. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the uh, those to break the torque on the stud. And we're, all we're gonna do is just back that out. So at this point we have the car removed and I was looking at it and I think we may have a Eureka and a, a aha moment because I'm pretty sure I, I figured out why this wasn't running. But we're gonna do we're gonna take it apart anyway. You really couldn't see this with the carb in there because of the way it was situated. On this carb, there's actually a fuel shutoff on it. Looking at the carb, just to kind of show you how this thing works. This is your throttle up here that opens and closes a butterfly. The, you have this guy down here, which opens and closes the choke. All right. So then I was looking at this, I go, what's this? And I realize what it is. This is the fuel shutoff. So then I'm looking at the guard or the air box housing and then right there it says on, right? So for the life of me, cause I wasn't, for the life of me, I wasn't paying attention to it when I, when I took it off cause I assumed that there was no fuel shutoff on it, but I'm pretty sure that lever or the fuel shutoff was in the, it was in the off position. So I'm going to laugh if that's what it, if that's all it is. So, um, but we've gone this far. Let's go ahead and go ahead, pull, pull the bowl, clean it out, make sure we have no issues. So much for that theory. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this thing had a lot of bad gas in it. Um, so there's a float. Um, this is the uh, the cover that, that goes to the fuel shut off. This is all the garbage that came out of it. There's a the bottom of the, fl of the float bowl, right? Uh, yeah, so it had a lot of bad gas in it for a long time. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna go ahead and pop the uh, the float off the uh, off the uh, the body. We'll take it apart as much as we can and uh, soak it in some carb cleaner and go from there. So what we're gonna do is there's a roll pin right here, and this one looks like it's just gonna come right out. So we're gonna slide the roll pin right out, put that in a safe place. And this float should come right off. There's a needle and seat right there, right? So put that to the side. So what I've done uh, in the meantime is I've just taken some carb cleaner and uh, sprayed it down and, and got rid of uh, some of the heavy residue. And at this point, I've taken the main jet uh, out of the carb and it's completely plugged up. You can't see through it. And all you need to do is just take a screwdriver, go right down there, find it, and then pop it out. Um, so at this point, I've already removed the O-ring from the uh, fuel shutoff supply, right? So I'm going to stick this the, the body in the, some carb cleaner and let it soak. Uh, I'm going to try to get this other O-ring off out um, that holds it onto the, the, you know, where the main bowl is. Um, Again, I don't want any spare parts, so I'm gonna try to pop this out with an X-Acto knife just to try to get a lip uh, underneath the lip and pop it out. Okay, so I just finished soaking all the parts, and what I soaked them in is 
I soaked them in this uh, carburetor cleaner one gallon kit. You can get it from any auto parts store. And then used compressed air, blew everything out, and then I did a final clean of carbon throttle body cleaner. Um, make sure you use carb cleaner versus brake cleaner because brake cleaner can be harsh on plastic parts. And you may actually find out that um, some of these will actually uh, start to deteriorate, especially the O-rings. So you always wanna use carb cleaner versus uh, brake cleaner. All right, so what I've done is, like I said, the main jet was completely plugged up. I couldn't even see daylight through it. And the hole on there is, is tiny. And uh, so even when I soaked it and then I used compressed air to blast it out, I, could, I still couldn't get whatever was in there. So if you look, you can see how tiny that hole is. So I ended up cleaning it out. All I did was I took a piece of uh, wire copper wire from uh, some uh, speaker wire that I had. I, I just took a couple strands off of it and I used this to poke it through whatever was in there. Now you can see through it. Hopefully you can see the, the red dot through there. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're, we're just gonna go ahead and do the reassembly and uh, get this thing back on the sled. So we had the car reassembled, pretty much just a reverse of taking it apart, it's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and slap this back on the little rev and see how we did. Right, so this was a uh, success fire right up and one thing I did is uh, there was some residual gas in there again I have no idea how old it was we just emptied it and put new gas in it um, primed it and it pulled over once we uh, once the uh, the bowl got filled with gas and then it's uh, it was just a matter of adjusting the idle speed which is I'll show you it's right there that black screw underneath that hose, all right? I was a little bit off because I think what happened is uh, people were probably messing with that, trying to get it to run, and uh, it was out of whack. But as you saw, it was running. The track was initially turning, but it kind of stopped on its own. And uh, I can actually, um, when it's running, I can just I can actually prevent the track from spinning with my hand. So even though it is turning a little bit. Um, it's doing that because it's free wheeling. Once it's on the snow and there's somebody going to be on it, it's it's not going to be an issue. And, you know, I'm sure there's some uh, wear on that clutch. It's probably causing it to engage a little bit uh, earlier than it should. But I think once uh, the sled starts getting to be used again, all that should probably pretty much uh, free up on its own. All right, so that's pretty much it on this particular video. What we're going to do is, at some point, we're going to drop the skid and. Uh, remove the drive shaft and fix that and get that squared away and make it assembled like it should be. All right, if there's any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.